Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. Coming up this week, Disney takes care of its cast members that were impacted by Hurricane Irma. Bob Iger cautions investors that profit for its next fiscal year may remain flat. And Disney has asked a judge to dismiss a lawsuit that claims it stole proprietary technology for use in some of its films. Also, we are going to have a major announcement to make in just a little while uh, that you're, you are not going to want to miss, especially if you want to have a chance for a once-in-a-lifetime experience at Walt Disney World and to help an amazing charity all at the same time. So stay tuned. That's coming up next. From the Bob Barley Studio in Orlando, Florida, this is The Diz Unplugged. This is the Diz Unplugged, episode 957, for the week of September 19th, 2017. The Diz Unplugged is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect Disney vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show, coming to you live from the Bob Varley Studio. I'm your host, Pete Werner. Joined at the table this week by my good friends, John Magi. Hi, everybody. Kevin Close. Hi, everyone. Steve Porter. Hello. Corey Martin. I'm just happy to be here. And back in the production nook, our producer, Mr. Craig Williams. Hello. <laughs> we're, a little, we're a little frustrated because, you know, my, my next door neighbor uh, cuts her lawn like once every six months, and it always is on a Tuesday. So that noise you hear behind me is uh, my neighbor out there with the uh, lawnmower. Um, because it's Tuesday, why not? Um, well, welcome to the show, everybody. It is good to be back, especially after the harrowing week uh, we had last week with Hurricane Irma. But as you can tell, we are all intact. Everybody made it through safe, and we're going to talk about that in just a little while. But I, I, I swear to God, she's just walking back and forth right behind this window. I think she's just like holding it up. And then turns it off, because it's off now. So that you're talking louder. <laughs> But before we get to uh, to any of that, why am I getting audio? Okay. Um, before we get to any of that, we have a huge announcement that we are very privileged to be able to make. Um, Give Kids the World has partnered with Omaze.com and Disney to offer a once a, a once in a lifetime experience for one lucky person. So when I'm saying once in a lifetime, you know, that, that, that phrase gets bantered around quite a bit. This one is actually a once in a lifetime experience. Something you've never done, right? I have never done. I've I never think, done it. And it's something that every Disney fan fantasize would about. fantasize about. Yep. A chance for you and your guests to spend one night in the dream suite at Cinderella Castle in the Magic Kingdom. Up to six guests. Up to six people. One night. You have to take the, the all of us. Yes. We are the other five. <laughs> so this is part of a, a month-long fundraiser that Give Kids the World is doing. And now you don't have to spend money to, to get a chance at this uh, just by signing up. You know, one, you know, a chance is entered into this. This is more of a raffle. This is not an auction. So it's it's really available to everyone. So it's not like, oh, you know, I'm going to have to bid $10,000 to get this. But you sign up at omaze.com. We're going to provide links and all this information for you a little later on. But you sign up at omaze. Automatically, you get a, a raffle chance. And then, of course, you have the option to purchase more chances. Um, and, you know, the more chances you buy, the more chances you have to win. Incredibly exciting. I'm going to tell you, I'm in. I'm in. Me too. Um, and I think this is going to raise a lot of money for Give Kids the World. But right now, Kathy Worling is standing by over at the Give Kids the World Village. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about this. How you doing, Kathy? Hi, Pete. I'm here at Give Kids the World in Kissimmee. And uh, how's everything over there? Magical as usual. And uh, is that Rhino playing the flute behind you? <laughs> <laughs> It's what, it's what I do in the in my off time. I'm sure you play the flute more than that. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So, we're, we're very excited about this, about this promotion. Who do you have there with you? 
Hi, Zamfir. I'm Nicole Ryan. I'm the director of development at Give Kids the Road. So tell us a little bit about, um, well, why don't you just tell us what you need to tell us. So tell us about the about the village. Tell us where you're standing right now. So we're, uh, Karen, you want to take that? We are here in the castle, and this is probably the most, for me, the most heartwarming place in the village. If you look up, you see the stars. There's a star tower in the back. These are all the children. Each star represents a child who has come here to give kids the world. And you were telling me earlier that they can view this online. They can see their stars. Yes, right? in the um, other room right there, we have uh, cameras that geolocate the stars. And so when families go home, they can also look at their star because sometimes that will go ahead and bring them comfort when they can go ahead and do the star that their child put up on the ceiling. Now, this is one of those places you need your tissues, but it, it, it's a good for the soul place. Now, um, one of the things that I, I just I, I want to talk about a little bit, you know, uh, we, we often talk about raising money for Give Kids the World. And certainly we've tried to do our part as well as many, many other organizations. Um, talk to us a little bit about what you're doing with this money, this money that you're raising. What is it going for? What is what kind of work are you doing there? Uh, to, to build up the village, to support uh, support these families? Well, it truly takes a village for uh, us to have our families come and visit us. With our WISH families, obviously, we have our families here. It will go towards their stay, their accommodations, and it costs us um, approximately $6,000 per family in order to offer a uh, free vacation for them and it's so important because it allows our families to come here and they don't have to worry about anything they don't have to worry about transportation from the airport they don't have to worry about the little things and we also want to make sure that we make their stay here as magical as possible because there's some days that maybe a child's not feeling well and they can't get to the parks so we want to make sure that they have that magical stay right here at give kids the world village and, uh, uh, you know, we've, we've talked about Give Kids the World uh, for many years. For those who may not be familiar with the organization, this is a village in Kissimmee, Florida, uh, that is designed to, to, uh, for uh, children and their families with life-threatening illnesses that want to come to Disney World. So when a child goes to Make-A-Wish and says, I want to go to Disney World, this is where they send them. Uh, Give Kids the World turns no child away. Um, and they have gone through extraordinary lengths at times to, uh, uh, to make sure that these children and their families have this opportunity. It's a, it's, a, it's a cause very dear to our hearts. It was very dear to uh, the late Bob Varley, who was a big part of our team, who the studio is named for. And uh, we're very proud uh, to be working with you and very honored that you came to us uh, to let us make this announcement. Uh, for you and I'll tell you I have been out of my mind I have been like not saying anything for the last few weeks and you know um, the thought of a chance I mean because nobody gets in there nobody gets to go into the dream suite I mean you can't buy it you can't there's no amount of money you can throw at this to get that dream suite other than an opportunity like this and ah uh, I'm I don't know I'm really excited Kathy what about you Are you excited about that oh uh you, you know I am. The, the chance to support a, a wonderful charity like Give Kids the World and get that once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to stay in the castle, words can't tell you how excited I am. Well, we're going we're gonna to up the ante a little bit. Um, uh, something that we want to do uh, for any of our listeners, any of our big spenders that want to really want to help out here, um, every person that sends us a verifiable receipt from omaze.com that you donated at least fifteen hundred dollars uh, as part of this gets dinner with the team. I don't care how many of, if if twenty of you do it, we'll have twenty dinners. Um, but every person that can provide a verifiable receipt from omaze.com for at least fifteen hundred dollars in a donation to this event, you'll get dinner with the team. Um, we want to do our part to help raise as much as we can. Now tell us, how long is this promotion, uh, this, uh, this uh, fundraiser going to go on for, Nicole? The uh, Chance to Win Omaze uh, Castle is going to go until October 13th. 
October 13th. And when will you be, do you know when you're going to be drawing the winner? Uh, the winner will be chosen the following week. It will be chosen within, I believe, three days of the end of the campaign. Okay, so a lot of people going to be sitting on pins and needles about around the 16th of, uh, of October. We're very, very excited yeah. about this. And throughout the month, we're going to be doing some... Uh, some live vlogs and some more stuff from Give Kids the World, kind of give you a different look at the village as we continue to promote this throughout the month. But this is to raise money for the best run charity in the United States. And that's not hyperbole. This is the best run charity in the United States. 95 cents out of every dollar goes directly to the mission. Um, so these people put their money where their mouth is. More importantly, they put their money where the need is. So we are so excited for this. And uh, you're going to be hearing a lot about it over the next month. And like I said, we're going to be doing some more things there from Give Kids the World Village. And uh, thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Rhino. Thank you, Nicole. Glad you thank could join you. us. We'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye. Thanks, Pete. Take bye. care now. Awesome. What I think is really great about this, you mentioned it, but I think it's worth repeating. This isn't uh, an, an auction. This isn't you have to beat somebody else. This is strictly a raffle. So you're buying, everybody has the same chance. You buy so a it's ticket. a $10, right? $10 raffle? What. I think each ticket is $10. I was going to say. You can buy up to as many as you want. No, maybe we should go over how you enter again. I'll say he's going to do all that in the show notes. We'll put a list. But it's omaze.com, and you'll see Give Kids o -M -A -Y -S? the World. O-M-A-Y-S? O-M-A-Z-E. Omaze. And this is a, uh, this is a, 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 a website that, you know, there's all sorts of dream experiences. So, like. You know, and, and there it is. Spend a magical night in Cinderella Castle Suite at Walt Disney World Resort. Um, it's right there on the front page, the first page. You can't miss it. So it's enjoy a dream come true night at the famed Cinderella Castle Suite at Walt Disney World Resort, along with two-day Disney park passes for each guest in your party. Um, feast on a fairy tale breakfast at Cinderella's Royal Table and get flown to and from Orlando. So this is this includes. Oh, I didn't know that. Holy wow. moly! This includes your airfare. What if we win? Um, <laughs> then they can somewhere. take the airfare. We're right here. First class. Know? I'm going somewhere. I'm driving um, to Miami and flying. In. <laughs> and so we're going to have a link to this. Omaze.com. O m a z e. dot com, and you'll see uh, this there. So um, uh, for ten dollars, you get one hundred. I mean, uh, ten dollars gets you one hundred entries. Twenty five dollars gets you two hundred and fifty entries. Uh, Fifty gets you five hundred. 100 gets you a thousand, so on and so forth, up to five thousand dollars for uh, 50 entries. So, or for, or for five, five thousand dollars gets you 50,000 entries in this. So, obviously, the more you spend, the more entries you get. Those little slips. No, it's I'm all just, electronic. It's all, you're right. It's not, it's all online. It's great. It's a very easy website to use. Uh, we checked it out when they first told us about it. Uh, I think it's great. I and think it's it, amazing. And again, the only reason why they have these sort of blocks is that they don't want to sell you a one dollar ticket, one dollar at a time. So you got to buy the chances in blocks. But you're not limited to that number. You can go back and buy more and more and more and keep donating and give kids the world. Um, I would love to see us break a record. I would love to see us be one of the highest ones. Uh, raising I, I, money I just, on you know, I I want to see them raise as much money right. as they possibly can because, like we've said before. Um, you know, you you don't come as even with charities. You you don't always come across charities. They sound good on the surface, but you hear all these stories about mismanagement of funds and how um, uh, you know they, they'll raise all this money, but then sixty or seventy percent of that money ends up going to more fundraising or administrative costs and paying outrageous salaries to their executive directors and all this other stuff. This is one of those charities, and that stuff doesn't go on. They're constantly rated the best-run charity in America. Um, and on top of that, we talk about the magic all the time. Who provides more magic than Give Kids the World? Right, exactly. exactly. And this is an entire village. This isn't just like a housing complex. There are restaurants and, and you know pools. And, uh, a ba Baskin Robbins sponsors the ice cream parlor. They have ice cream for breakfast is their big thing. And you know one of the things I remember Pamela Landworth, who's the executive director, saying... These are children that live a life where they're always told, no, you can't go outside, you can't go do this, you can't go do that. Their goal is to make that a week of yes. 
for these kids. Give them the opportunity to do things. They provide these beautiful, beautiful uh, facilities for them uh, to stay in, and it's it's, it's just amazing. The it's village well, is stunning. I was well, sorry. A lot of our listeners, a lot of the folks who are. Um, part of our community have volunteered there in the past they get together in clumps I don't, groups i guess is a better word and they go and volunteer together so no i was uh over there last night so i i have some stuff that i'll show uh everyone who watches us in in the future here uh, along with this campaign but i actually this was my first time ever going and it it blew me away so i got to see it's incredible right i got to see all the kids having dinner and getting to meet uh mayor the the mascot of of give kids the world and then i got to peek in on their halloween party and all the games that the volunteers set up for them and it was just like i, I had goosebumps the entire time being there i couldn't believe what those people do in there it's it's just incredible it's amazing one of the most amazing things is the kids aren't special there and I know that sounds sort of counterintuitive, but you know, after you've been special for a while, you can get tired of being special. They're just kids. They're treated like kids. They're not treated like kids with a life-threatening illness. Mm -hmm. They get to be a, one of the group. They get to be kids. They get to be kids. So the, you, I, I, maybe this helps explain why we are so, um, so passionate about raising money for Give Kids the World um, and any opportunity uh, you know, we, we're 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 all fortunate that you know we go to Disney World, right? Um, that we have our health, that we have the ability to do that, um, and we know what it means to us when we go. We know how you know every single one of us in this room, every one, a single one of you watching me right now, all has a personal story about what it means to you. Now imagine that. <laughs> That emotion, that 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 magic, um, when you need it the most, when when there's when 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 it's life threatening. It's also um, amazing for the parents because when you have a child that's ill, you don't have money to go to Disney World usually. Right. So it's a vacation for them too. Mm -hmm. yep. It's for the whole family, and it creates memories that are you know as we've heard from multiple families that have have gone to give kids the world the memories that were created there were something that with its priceless so this is part of what we can do the little bit we can do to help um is to raise money for this amazing organization and i swear as long as there is air in my lungs we will always be finding trying to find ways to raise money for give kids the world so help us out omaze.com o-m-a-z-e.com sign up and go ahead and please be generous Please be generous. And like I said, anybody that can verify they've donated at least $1,500 to this uh, through Amaze, um, we'll take you to dinner. I have a second suggestion. Let's not stop at our listeners. Let's ask everybody to go out and get five of your friends to donate. Absolutely. I won't have dinner with them. <laughs> really? Okay. Don't I'll like have that. dinner with you. I'm not going to have dinner with your friends. Talk to your friends and get them to do it, too. Get everybody to do it. Help us out. Help us out. We want to see this be really successful. This is not a fundraiser that we've organized right. in any way, shape, or form. This is all being done with Disney and Give Kids the World. Uh, they just came to us and asked us to help promote it. And, of course, I told them that the show on the site is at their disposal. And like um, you said, like this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Everybody asks, can I buy a night nope. to stay there? I've tried. <laughs> so I've I mean, tried. Believe me. I think the suite sells itself, but knowing the cause that it's going to. I have no. It, the suite doesn't excite me. I, Being in the park after everyone is gone. I don't know why that is. in the suite in the park. I, I will tell you this. Like um, I had thing. a chance uh, years ago to, to tour the suite, and there's something surreal about being in, in that suite and this castle, something I've looked, looked up at my entire life. And to have this, I didn't get to stay the night. It was like a just a quick tour, but to look through those windows and look down on Main Street and say, "Wow, I was there looking up all my life," and it just I oh get the goosebumps god. thinking just, about it. You just gave me goosebumps. Oh my god! Another oh. really important thing I think too is the more people that donate, the more this will be one of their like trending current campaigns on the Omaze site, which could just not only just in the donations help but you're also just bringing awareness by other people that are visiting omaze maybe for something completely different that can then see what give kids the world is all about so that's another really good thing our listeners it. are really really generous i think they're no gonna question. blow this up 
Blow it up, guys. Blow it up. So, all right. Um, you know what? There, I, I do have a rant on something. I'm going to wait till later, though. I don't want to. I, I can't. Harsh the buzz. Yeah, I can't. We're all in such a good mood. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to go on a rant. But I do have. I do have some things to say about Air Canada coming up. But uh, why don't we just? Uh, why don't we just segue into the news, John? All right. So while I do the news, how many of those are you going to buy? How many tickets are you? He's are you maxing his like? five thousand out. <laughs> All right, I don't want to, we don't want to throw anybody off. And we are allowed to enter and win because this is not our promotion, You're correct? Right? Yeah, right. No, absolutely. This is not. We have nothing to do with this. We have nothing to do with the administration of this or anything at all. We're picking the winner. Nothing correct. at all. Nope. Um, so my chances are just as good as yours. There you go. All right. So our first news story: Walt Disney World paying all cast members for lost shifts due to Hurricane Irma. It was announced that Walt Disney World would be paying all cast members, union and non-union, for their shifts for Sunday, September 10th, and Monday, September 11th, which they lost due to Hurricane Irma. Many of these cast members live paycheck to paycheck, and without Disney covering the lost two days of wages, many of them may have struggled with paying their bills. Walt Disney World is often in the headlines for the company's frugality towards their cast members. Recently, heated debates between Disney and the workers' union sparked a further divide between the cast members and the company they work for. Disney's covering the lost wages for those two days is a big gesture that will go a long way for some cast members. Well, <clears throat> excuse me. A um, uh, couple things I want to say. First of all, yes, this was. I thought this was really cool that Disney did this. Um, but... Um, it's also, um, after what I saw, what limited piece of this I saw, uh, they absolutely deserve it. They absolutely deserve it. Um, so I knew pretty pretty sure I was going to lose power with the hurricane because, you know, on a summer day, I'll lose power here sometimes. So... Um, and it had happened during Hurricane Charlie. We were without power for like seven or eight days. So um, I, I went ahead and I booked a room over at Port Orleans uh, French Quarter. More for my mother because that's who I was really worried about. Yeah, you need air conditioning. She has to be in right, air conditioning. Right. She gets overheated really easy and, and it's not good for her health. So I wanted to make sure, you know, if I had a sleep, okay, you know, I'm not going to like it. I'm not going to be pretty. But um, so I booked a room at, at Port Orleans. And um, sure enough, that night, you know, the night of the storm, I lose power, mom loses power. Uh, and I was just waiting for the curfew to be lifted Monday night before I drove her down there. But before the curfew lifted, she got her power back. She had her power back at like 11 o'clock Monday morning. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, hotel room down there, I'll go use it then. So I waited for the curfew and I drove down. Now, keep in mind, you know, under the best circumstances, uh, this is it's stressful going through these hurricanes. I mean, it's scary, it's scary, especially when it's a powerful storm like this. And of course, we had five days of hysteria on the news, um, and you know everything that could possibly go wrong. Even the day before, it's going to hit you. It's not going to hit you. It's going to hit you. Oh, yeah, it's going out to, to sea. So it's not coming near you. Very stressful, and so. You know, and plus all the work you got to do getting your house secured and getting things inside. So by the time Monday night rolls around, um, and I haven't slept well for two nights, um, and I get down to Port Orleans, and of course, you know, there was a line at check-in, which is totally understandable. It's a lot going on. Um, first thing I noticed, there were, I want to say, at least four cast members working that lobby asking everyone like how are you is there anything that we can do for you they were bringing people water um they were it like the old days like that kind of friendly and mm. and I, you know i wasn't fully appreciating it at the moment um like wow this is really nice and very helpful they were very helpful at check in and then while i was checking in is when uh, the, the young lady that was uh, I was talking to said, "Yeah, you know, we've all been here since we've all been here since Saturday night." Mm -hmm. And I'm like, "Okay, wait a second. You, you know, that's right. These guys 
these guys have been working ride out crews since Saturday night. They don't know like if their homes are okay. They're not with their families. And I'm sitting here feeling sorry for myself because, you know, I'm kind of tired. Um, and it just kind of put it in perspective for me. Every single cast member I ran into at that resort was absolutely amazing. And I'm talking mm-hmm. about front desk. I'm talking about uh, the, the cast members in the, in the, that were working the lobby. The folks in the food court, as I walked to my room, the maintenance guy stopped, said hello, chatted with me for a little bit. Um, There's it, another it, testimonial to this on the Diz boards. On our the Diz Unplugged site, Tony Z has written a rather lengthy post about his experience of riding the storm out at Disney, and he echoes what you said. And, you know, what we talked about the week before the hurricane, we're talking about it's really the safest place to be. Mm-hmm. And it's also, you have this massive organization that is not only focused on keeping you safe, but making you comfortable at the same time. Right. There's Trust a, me, if you were at Disney World, for the most part, if you were at Disney World during during Hurricane Irma, you were among the most comfortable people yeah. and the safest people in Central Florida. Can I echo that with Universal? Uh, we Heard great a, things about them, too. We yep. had our fam, our agent training at Universal, and uh, happened to be right there when Irma was hitting, and I cannot tell you how wonderful they were. And the reports back from agents, they said they didn't even know a hurricane was going on. It was like staying mm-hmm. in a fortress at the Portofino Bay Hotel. They didn't hear anything, they didn't know anything, and they treated them like... I even think of of the cast members it took to take down the the decorations. Right. Right. All all the Halloween decorations in the park before the hurricane hit. That's a lot. Think about everything. Tying benches up. Water parks and stuff. It's incredible. Uh, The Lowe's hotels are pet friendly all the time. It's my understanding that the Disney hotels... uh, Allowed we're, pets. Allowed we're pets. allowing pets, yes, they were. Their no pet policy was lifted for the hurricane. We're still not paying tolls here in Orlando because the... It, um, it just stopped. I think they just stopped it today. Yeah. Just oh, announced. did it? Because we just didn't pay a toll getting here. That j- The report well, I think, I just think, came out this morning. Yeah, like, I just saw it a few, oh, like like an hour ago. That, oh, that it just happened. I hate yeah. that now. I have to pay tolls. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you all know, this is not the case for dreams. We are not covering wages for those two days. Even if you worked, I'm still going to dock you. <laughs> Even if you're a part of the country that had nothing to do with the hurricane. Um, not appropriate. Not appropriate. <laughs> Too soon. Too soon. Um, no, I, I, I uh, you know, there's, there's just too many occasions where I can come on the show and criticize Disney. And I feel it's justifiable. Um, so it feels really nice on the aftermath of something like Irma to be able to come on and say, you know what? First rate job. First rate job Disney did. Their cast members did because, and, and this kind of t- comes back to it, um, what made the difference were those cast members on the ground. Were those cast members that were in the lobby, in the food court, at front desk, the maintenance guys, the housekeepers, those folks, those are the ones that made it, made the difference. So when you're negotiating wages, that should be thought of too. Um, that these guys deserve a, a living wage, especially when they're giving you that and they're giving up time, they're giving up being with their family and protecting their homes during a major storm. Can um, I do something sort of unusual? You gonna dance? Oh, that's no. You'd have <laughs> to poke would, your eyes out. That would be um, unusual. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna. Can I do my rapid fire now? It's really apropos to what we're talking sure. about. Sure. The Walt Disney Company donates 2.5 million dollars in humanitarian aid to support communities impacted by Irma. Uh, the Walt Disney Company committed 2.5 million dollars uh, to help Florida, the Caribbean, Texas, all and everyone. Uh, affected by the hurricanes. The donation will support the dis- the disaster response and recovery efforts of the American Red Cross, UNICEF, Save the Children, and other nonprofits. As millions of people now face the donating challenging of putting their lives and communities back together in the wake of these historic storms, Bob Iger says the Walt Disney Company will donate $2.5 million. This is in addition to the nearly $16 million we raised after Hurricane Harvey to help ensure victims have the support they needed to recover. In addition to Disney's donation announced today, contributions from Disney employees to eligible relief and recovery organizations will be matched dollar for dollar by the Disney Employee Matching Gifts 
a program of the Walt Disney Company Foundation. During Hurricane Irma, during Hurricane Irma Walt Disney World and Disney Cruise Line donated meals, provided storage for supplies and power utility vehicles, donated bedding to shelters, and made rooms available for first responders. Disney will also be donating goods and services throughout the region as specific needs are identified. Additionally, this evening, in partnership with other media companies, I'm sorry, this is old news, then the Hand in Hand concert was on, but I thought that was pretty cool, too. Amazing. So I thought that went really well with what you were talking about. they They are really good at being very good members of the community absolutely disney um but while we're given while we're giving props to companies that stepped up during the hurricane got to give some real props to royal caribbean um yep sending ships mm-hmm. full of supplies uh down uh to the island st martin st thomas uh barbuda pick, barbuda picking up this place people. picking up people delivering things um and you know, you got to give them props, and you know, it's it's easy for us to talk about here in Central Florida um, because we live here and we were directly affected by it. Um, I think of the number of times I visited the islands of St. Martin and St. Thomas, St. John. Um, it's my favorite mm-hmm. island in the Caribbean. Um, these islands are virtually destroyed. And, um, and Puerto Rico tomorrow. And Puerto Rico is under threat, yeah. a terrible threat from Cat Five, Hurricane Maria. Um, and they need our support as well. Um, but, you know, Houston and, and or Texas and Florida got a lot of attention for these, these storms. I feel like these guys are being forgotten because um, they're not here. And, you know, it's... There's an interesting statistic. Uh, John has said it many times. I think it struck him that for the first time in 300 years... No one is a lot. No one's living on the island of Barbuda. No one is on the island. Yep. Wow. That's pretty First amazing. Yeah, three hundred years. I need to correct myself on the toll story. It's uh, as of September twenty first. I was going to say because yeah. we, just, we have to go through a couple of tolls to get here. So like they must have been turning it on as we went through. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, and I have to give as 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 much as I I, I want to choke on these words coming out of my mouth. I have to really give a tip of the hat to our governor. Uh, he was everywhere, um, everywhere. And I think state and local authorities did an amazing, I mean, they were just prepared. They just were prepared. <clears throat> and the fact that I had power back in two days was like surprising to me because I'm like, all right, we're, we're down for a while. There are still some people who don't. Oh, have over power. in Seminole County, it's, it's, and it's terrible. Not only that, there. in Osceola County, and there are people yeah. that are angry. Um, well, I would be too, sure. Um, yeah. I was starting to get pissed off after 48 hours. I, mean, I can't imagine if it was two weeks. I, we haven't had a direct hit like this um, since 2004. So I think after Hurricane Katrina, and especially after Harvey just showed what happens, I think our state was better prepared than we've ever been before. And, no unfor- and, and unfortunately, like with Katrina and seeing the damage there um, personally, Hopefully that we've started to learn from our mistakes, not us, and well, maybe even us, to prepare better. And then FEMA, learning from what they did wrong um, during Katrina and you know uh, Harvey and everything. And hopefully, you know the, the response like times it. are, are yeah. we're getting better like at this. Even as, as, even as far as even as far as city planning and things like that, we live in a fairly new community in St. Cloud. We never lost power. We didn't flood. We had none of the issues a lot of the other parts of the state had, even though we took a direct mm-hmm. hit. That speaks for how they're planning communities nowadays. The Army Corps of Engineers is doing I things. also think we have to give some credit to the coverage of Harvey. I think them watching, I think people watching the emergency evacuations mm-hmm. of people who stayed, they said this was the largest evacuation in the history of the United States. Just want to point out, though, um, two Category 5 hurricanes hit the United States in the span of a week. And there's another Category 5 hurricane churning out in the Atlantic right now. Um, not going to get political. Something's up. Even Something's Jose, up. Even I'm Jose telling, we, is going to hit the, the Northeast, apparently. So you're saying Disney needs to move to the North. No. <laughs> no. You're saying we need to figure saying out what's that, going on. Yeah, I know. I know. That, I'm kidding. You know, and at the very least, at the very least, um, that anybody... You know, look, it's been 13 years since this has happened. Um, And 13 years ago, 
there were three storms. The eye of three different storms passed over downtown Orlando. Um, I remember it well. Mm. It was the first year I had this house. And, but they weren't, they weren't like this. I mean, these weren't, it, it, now apparently we have a once in a lifetime storm every week. 500 um, year floods now twice. There's a person on TV all the time and his name is Neil deGrasse Tyson. And I find him very believable. He just comes across as, he just, I believe him. And he said the biggest threat to our world right now is coastal cities are the vast population centers of the United States and pretty much everywhere because of cities were built close to shipping ports, so people want to live. rivers, yeah. etc. And he said those are the biggest, those are the people that are threatened. And we can't take a city like Miami and move it 20 miles inland. No. So he said, you have to keep aware of that. He said, we have to start thinking about things like walls, um, retaining walls, trying storm to surge. storm surge walls and things like that. He said, and that's, I don't think anybody's really thinking about that. And I thought to myself, that's really something we should all be thinking about. Yeah. So, um, you know, let's hope that it's another 13 years before we or have to more, deal with this again. Or I'll more. get a generator by then. It's funny. You know what, Corey? <laughs> I, I haven't done it yet because we've been busy. I'm looking into a full house generator. That's yeah, exactly yeah. what we're doing. Even half, even half house. Just well, we can live half on. of your house is my house. <laughs> right, <exactly>. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> the mansion, that yeah, the McMansion there. over here. So, all right, the Martin estate. All right, <laughs> jeez, our Martin next, Arms. <laughs> Martin Arms. Our next news story: Disney joins Fox and Paramount in stolen tech lawsuit dismissal attempt. Disney, Fox, and Paramount have given their argument for the dismissal of a lawsuit involving the use of stolen motion capture technology in their films. The suit, put forth by VFX firm Reardon LLC, seeks damages and profits from the studios for the use of their stolen MOVA or MOVA technology on the basis of copyright, trademark, and patent violations. The studios are now making their case against that idea with arguments about whether ownership of a product resides with the technology used or the creative elements employed. A little backstory. Reardon LLC developed a motion, pi- motion capture technology MOVA that focused on recording and reproducing realistic facial expressions. MOVA has since been used uh, without incident to help create such films as The Curious Case of Benjamin Buttons, The Transformers, The Harry Potter franchises, and Snow White and the Huntsman. According to Reardon founder Steve Perlman, a former employee by the name of Greg LaSalle transferred the MOVA technology to other companies, uh, Digital Domain 3.0 being one of them. Digital Domain 3.0 was purchased by some Chinese company that I cannot pronounce. Try it. These events led to an international economic espionage investigation by the FBI and numerous court proceedings between Reardon LLC, and blah, 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 Digital blah, blah, blah. Domain, and that Chinese company. Uh, Reardon has been largely successful in the proceedings so far. Reardon alleges that uh, the three film studios, Disney, Fox, and Paramount, as well as one video game developer, Crystal Dynamics, purchased and used stolen MOVA technology for the creation of certain products. The suit references such films as Avengers Age of Ultron, Guardians of the Galaxy, Beauty and the Beast, Deadpool, and Night at the Museum, Secret of the Tomb. Video game developer Crystal Dynamics is involved for their game, Rise of the Tomb Raider. Rudin views this use as a violation of copyright right, trademark, and patent laws. They expect compensation for damages and a percentage of the studio's profits. Oof. Yeah, that's big, considering those films that they're talking about. Well, if uh, if the court doesn't dismiss, this is going to get ugly. So here's the deal, right? Somebody steals something and you use it without knowing that it was stolen. Are you now yeah. culpable for using something? It's like stolen? buying stuff to fill off the truck. Yeah, but I think in that in that regard, you suspect something is stolen. But if I go to a store and I buy something on a shelf off a store, and then later find out they stole it, am I culpable for buying that item? I don't think so. I don't know. I'm not Where a lawyer. Where are you shopping? 
Yeah, really? <laughs> Publix. Publix. Damn, Ross. <laughs> Yo, Publix still, still having trouble getting eggs. Oh, and mm. chopped up certain, vegetables. There are certain products that are just completely missing, and I, I can only assume that the people that the people who make those products are, badly affected. are affected. I also think stuff like milk, as soon as it comes in, it just gets bought up yeah, right away. During the hurricane, the thing that surprised me most was crackers. Crackers were gone. There were, like, our cracker shelves, it, like locusts. And I thought, I didn't even consider buying crackers until you told me I couldn't. <laughs> now I'm pretty sure I need them. <clears throat> so what do you guys think about this? I mean, do we think that Disney has to pay this this company? I think it's going to be an else? interesting... I want to wait and see whether or not the judge dismisses this suit. If he doesn't, we have to get Jack Bergen in. Because... It's so complicated. It's what was really the company's com- name? Volvo? No, the Mo- technology Mova? is Mova. The technology Mova. is called Mova. Oh, it's reared an Mova. LLC. I didn't know who you were talking about. I'm sorry. That then, that then an employee of that company sold it to another company that Disney and then these mm-hmm. other studios are purchased yeah. it from or using it from. So I don't know. I don't know what the legal... Because, yeah, if they, if, they, if they win a judgment that gives them a percentage of the profits from films like this, that's massive. Hmm. That's massive. So, All right. Our third and final news story. Disney CEO Bob Iger cautions shareholders that profits will be similar to last year. Disney shares dropped 4% after CEO Bob Iger warned shareholders that profit this year will be similar to last year. Iger said, quote, you have to look at the year being roughly in line with what we delivered in fiscal 2016. According to CNBC, in 2016, Disney reported earnings per share of $5.72, and Thomas Reuter estimate that the estimate that the 2017 fiscal year Disney will report earnings of $5.88 per share. CEO Bob Iger attributed the financial struggles to not having as big of a Star Wars film as last year, being that Rogue One, a Star Wars story, wasn't as successful as Star Wars The Force Awakens, plus the increase in cost of NBA rights for ESPN and Disney's increased stake in BAM Tech. I don't understand investors. I just don't. Because you're not going to make more than you did last year, you're going to sell off a stock that performs well. I very think well. it's probably. Um, <clears throat> I, I think more so they're looking at it as, okay, maybe buy, the bloom is off the rose. Or buy more. Yeah, buy more. This is when I buy more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Buy more. Now. When the stock goes down, the stock went under hundred dollars a share. <laughs> yeah, that's when I look at it because I think Disney is a long term company. Yeah, that's but you're buying like eighth of a share. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do my cut up. Here's twenty two dollars and seventy five cents. How many and stocks can I get for that? And some crackers right. and a Louis Vuitton bag. <laughs> Don't tell Kevin about the Louis Vuitton bag. Exactly. I wanted the friends and family preview. I just want you to know. <laughs> Peace my, collection. My concern when we hear numbers reports from Disney and the shareholders being upset and stuff like that happening, it makes me concerned for current construction projects being maybe not completely what they and getting scaled back on maybe we shouldn't invest as much money as we really wanted to originally because we're already mm. kind of struggling financially yeah. so hopefully stuff like this doesn't result in star wars land or toy story land not really getting everything or to the extent that we kind of were promised because i feel like in past stories of stuff like beastly kingdom when a- animal kingdom happened and then you know there's financial trouble because was it 9-11 at the time or i don't remember what caused beastly kingdom to not be created but stuff like financial troubles that cause con- current construction problems i feel like that's like a proven history kind of at disney parks and so i'm now worried about S- star wars land and toy story land and projects going forward when i hear stuff like that the thing is he hasn't you know he very very top of the surface said you know it was movies he says, because the movie's in ESPN that we're not going to make it. When you see the full report, I think you're going to see um, theme parks will be up. Theme parks, every hotel room was full. I mean, they could not keep, they, they had no availability at all. So theme parks is selling out, selling out, selling out. I think that's going to be a strong business. I don't think it's going to affect theme parks. The problem I have is that Disney is a very, like any other entertainment company, there's an ebb and flow. So you release Star Wars The Force Awakens and then, you know, it's not so great the next year, but then the next Star Wars movie comes out and it's big again. Or a new Marvel movie comes out. We just heard that that 
the this past summer has been the worst movie since the the, the worst year since the depression for movies. That wow. the box office was really really low this year. Yeah, they had a rough year. So that could affect it. Why are you looking at me like that? I didn't make that up. Depression? Didn't they pay was like it? a dime to go see the movie? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it, they say it's the it's it's the worst year since like 1984 or something oh, like that. I was depressed in 1984. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> It happens. <laughs> all right. Well, I guess that'll do it for the news. All I've right. Completely lost control. Um, all right. Before we go to rapid fire, I, I, I have a little rant that I want to talk about. Um, and I, I it doesn't apply to everybody, but those of you that may be considering using Air Canada for a vacation, don't. And here's why. I have a friend of mine who is coming to visit from Sydney, Australia. And he booked a flight, business class, on Air Canada. It's supposed to leave yesterday. And uh, you know, he's texting me from the plane. I'm on the plane. It's all good. You know, seeing a little bit, or well, in like day and a half because it takes that long to get here from there. But um, a few hours later, he texts me and says, "We still haven't taken off." Like he's like, "They're not telling us what's going on." Well, it turns out there was a problem with the engine, which is going to happen. And uh, after sitting on the tarmac for like two and a half hours, they go back to the gate. Maintenance comes. They do something. They say, okay, plane's good. Pull back from the gate. Same problem with the engine. Right, that's when you don't get back on the plane. Right. Exactly. Well, they pull, come back to the gate, and the pilot says, everybody needs to get off the plane. This plane's out of service. And this is where the wheels come off the wagon, so to speak. They tell everyone to go back through immigration. Go back to uh, baggage claim and get your bags. <laughs> and go home. <laughs> you ain't and there's an Air Canada rep at baggage, at baggage claim with taxi vouchers. Go to your hotel, go home, and in a few hours, call Air Canada. We don't know what to tell you. Okay? Was it their one plane? Oh, hold on. So my friend... Now, you see, I would have been like, oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm going home. You know, I'm getting out of here. Let's. What are you doing? But he went back. You know, he lives there, so he went back home. Two and a half hours on the phone. Three different people at Air Canada. All of them saying, "Oh no, that plane wasn't canceled. That that was just delayed." It's like, no, they made us all leave, <laughs> and they made us take our bags and leave the airport. The flight was canceled. And sure enough, you know, after making some phone calls, yeah, the flight was canceled. Well, the the next flight we have out, this is Monday, mind the way, by the way, that we don't have another flight out till Wednesday. Till Wednesday. Offer him nothing. No apology, no compensation, nothing. Just, we'll put you out Wednesday. Now, I would expect this from some cut rate, Billy, Billy Bob's House of Discount Airline. Allegiant. Allegiant. Spirits worse. I would have expected that from them. From Air Canada? It's a major air carrier. It's the national airline of Canada. What should have been done, what should have been done, those people should have been put on the next available flight out of Sydney regardless of carrier because that's what a reputable airline would do. Instead of just telling people, go home, wait a couple of hours, make a phone call, and hope for the best. So if you're thinking about using Air Canada for anything, don't. Like Tracy, when she comes down here, I understand she'll drive to Buffalo so that she has better options in airlines. She will drive an hour and a half to Buffalo to avoid taking Air Canada. I don't understand how how come they, they didn't have another plane. Don't you have like another plane that you can put people on? I, I don't. They're so, running it on Monday and Wednesday. It's kind of like the Pony Express. <laughs> well, and like I said, you know, there are other carriers. There are other carriers. And look, okay, mechanical problems happen. And certainly happen. you don't mm-hmm. want them taking off with that. But that's not your customer's fault. That's your fault. I That's also, your plane. I also find it weird that they made everybody go th- back through customs and get their luggage and everything. Because usually they do something where there's a representative there. Nope. The only get- representative was a baggage claim, handing out taxi vouchers, and not answering any questions. Man. I just hope your friend, like, sucked those two hours up drinking as much as he could in business He doesn't class. drink. He oh. doesn't drink. Oh, forget that then. So, you know, but hopefully, <laughs> hopefully he gets out tomorrow. 
Because yeah, nothing's more fun than being thrown off the plane drunk. <laughs> and exactly. <laughs> this is customs. What are you talking about? This guy is, I mean, he's a huge <laughs> Disney fan. He is so excited about coming here. Um, and it just, it just like, you know, okay, mark that on the airlines. I'm not going to trust my vacation to. Um, so Air Canada, you suck. <laughs> and don't ever use Air Canada. So with that, we're going to move on to rapid fire. We'll start with you, Mr. Magi. All right. Our first news story, Air Canada. No, like <laughs> Hashtag. Hashtag Air Canada sucks. I want to see that trending. I want to see that trending on hashtag Air Canada sucks. I don't care if you're talking about the weather. Just hashtag Air Canada sucks. Let's get that out there as much as possible, okay? Family activities revealed for Marvel Day at Sea on Disney Cruise Line. Um, Air Canada the- sucks. In about a month, Marvel Day at Seas is going to de- debut on Disney Cruise Line. These are for select sailings out of New York City. Um, a lot it looked like a lot of fun, a lot of cool stuff going on. But they've uh, made an announcement about some of the things you can expect. There's going to be a family costume celebration. They're inviting guests to dress in costume and bring costumes and dress up on the cruise. Superhero training for kids. Um, lots of film screenings of current Disney and Marvel movies. Uh, there'll be Marvel trivia. And, of course, Mickey and Friends will be there. And I understand Mickey and Friends are going to be dressed up like Marvel superheroes. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, these are select seven and eight night Disney Cruise Line sailings from New York City. Um, if you're looking at specific dates, it's October 6th through November 18th, 2017. And January 7th through April 29th on the Disney Magic. I did look up some of these dates. There's still availability on these cruises if you're interested. I will say this. They seemed a little expensive to me. They but if you have bit. the urge to wear that spandex outfit on a ship, there you go. this is your chance. <laughs> they seemed on the expensive side, so I'm not sure how many people will be able to do it at the last minute. But there's still space on those cruises. Awesome. Thank you, John. I can read my thing again. Yes. Please don't. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> um, so. Dave? Ellen DeGeneres last week on her show actually addressed the closing of Universe of Energy um, and she just talked about how her animatronic, she wants it back. So it's just, it was a kind of a parody of a political situation that I won't go into, um, addressing statues and things like that, but she essentially says that she wants to take her statue from the attraction and she would like to have it back from Disney. And apparently Imagineering replied to her and said, you're, you're robots dismantled <laughs> <laughs> in a warehouse somewhere it has no legs <laughs> well it hasn't been there for like right. a while they so. said it hasn't been there in so long and it's it's in pieces somewhere we don't even oh, why would Benjamin they do that though, move like, <laughs> keep it intact at least right i don't know it you never know when you need another ellen animatronic <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they can come in handy <laughs> what did she say Paul of America? lesbians Harold <laughs> Rosie O'Donnell. I would go to that attraction. I would do. I think we should petition Disney for, for Hall of Lesbians. Hall of I want lesbians. to see that trending. Hashtag Hall of Lesbians. Um, We've kept them busy. They're Air donating sucks. and hashtagging at this moment. Mm-hmm. Air Canada sucks. <laughs> Corey, thank uh, you, Steve. All right, so. Uh, Catalina Eddy's uh, Rosie's uh, All Star American, uh, no, All American Cafe in Fairfax Fair joined the mobile ordering starting today, September 19th. Um, currently, there are seven locations at the Magic Kingdom, two locations at Epcot, six locations at Disney's Animal Kingdom, um, no, no, six locations at Hollywood Studios, and four locations at Animal Kingdom. And there's only one location at Disney Springs. Um, I think this mobile ordering, I think we're going to see it across. Yeah, the, the entire the, property, with with the exception of like Chico. But it also looks like they're. Well, I don't think they're going to do it for table service. Of course not. I'm just. Um, but uh, I, I think they're doing this rollout responsibly. It's you know, a couple places at a time, kind of expanding it slowly. I, I've yet to use it, but I'm going to be in the parks a lot. It's the next very convenient. Weeks, so I'm gonna. I, I definitely need to try it out. What would happen though if they did like the crappy like Olive Garden chilies where they put the iPad on your table so that way if you like need to order another drink and your server's not paying attention to you, 
you'd be able to do that. And oh, pay. Like, and I'm pay really, and cash out. Yeah. I'm really I worried like that it could get the thing. I just, <laughs> we, were at, we had to run errands yesterday. We did the Chili's, and I paid for everything at the table. You, anytime where I don't have to talk to anybody, I'm all in. <laughs> See, I hate those. <laughs> so nah, yeah, so my food like can me. come up but from the table in a trivia. Two. Those sticky things. The only game I like to play at the table is like in Cracker Barrel, those little triangle <laughs> games. <laughs> you can play trivia and stuff on these things. Oh. He's amazed where the conversation goes. Yeah, really. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Corey. Craig. Uh, I'm going to end off. I'm sorry. I'm like hunched over right now. Had some issues. But uh, I'm ending off with a sad I'm, story. I'm trying to think of what issues. What issue makes you hunch? Uh, lots of stuff. Her- hemorrhoids. But, <laughs> no. Do you want Not a donut? No, thank you. Okay. I'm, I'm good. So uh, sad news. Since the last time we were able to be in here and record a show, uh, Exitensio passed away yeah. last mm-hmm. week at the age of 98. So, uh, not necessarily unexpected, but uh, he definitely lived a full life. If you don't know who Exitensio is, anytime you ride Pirates of the Caribbean and hear dialogue or, or Yo Ho, a pirate's life for me, Haunted Mansion, same thing with Grim Grinning Ghosts. He helped co write co write both of those songs. He did, I mean, he worked on If You Had Wings, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of this stuff with Epcot doing dialogue and, and just so much i mean he was he was a true disney legend and uh you know like i said he lived nice long life and uh his con- contributions to the disney company will be remembered for a long long time can i tell you a great existential story yeah please we're at disney world used to have something called the 999 happy haunts ball it was um, a haunted mansion event. It was a pin event. There was a whole lot of stuff going on, and the gentleman Jason Sorrell, he's written several Disney books. He used to uh, run Disney trivia on Disney Cruise Line. He was, we got to know him kind of well, and he walked up to me one day and he said, "Do you know who that man is over there?" And I said, "I don't recognize him." And he goes, "Said that's ex- that's ex Atencio," and he said, "Come on over, I'll introduce you." Mm. And we went over and we stood there and we talked to him and. We asked for his autograph and without saying and took a picture and without saying another word, people started to gather around him and he was with his wife and I said to her, I really apologize, I didn't mean to create this and she pulled me aside and she said, Would you find a cast member to get him a chair or a stool? And I said, Do you want me to help someone extricate him from this? And she said, No, let him go. He'll think this is fantastic. Mm. And he sat there for what I understand was a couple of hours talking to people. Wow. They put him up on the um the veranda at oh, the Liberty Tree Tavern. And he stood there and people lined up with it for a chance to um, get him to sign something or meet him. He was very, very, That's very cool. gracious. Yeah. But and his wife said to me, Thank you for doing this. He said no she said most people wouldn't even recognize him, but he likes the recognition. Oh, so it was awesome. really sweet. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, we're losing a lot of legends lately. You know, well, so that we're reaching I'm, I'm the just, age. Well, I'm just glad though that to some degree, you know, through podcasts like ours and many others that have interviewed these guys, there is a. We brought Marty Sklar to an event. Yeah. And well, Marty, again, you know, these guys have done a lot, not just with us, yeah. with many other podcasts. Right. So there's this huge library out there now of of interviews with these with these folks so that mm-hmm. you know from a fan perspective anyway uh, some of that stuff is, is I give D23 preserved. a lot of credit I think D23 yeah. has really done that thing where they sort of recognize that the fans want to meet these folks sure so they brought them to their events I found I, more I found a photo of Marty Sklar and John Hench laying um, on the Epcot model and it was D23 where Marty Sklar he, he had never seen that photo before I I I don't know where I found it, but I printed it out. He signed it, and he goes, I guess this is why Epcot took so long to build, <laughs> which is a picture of him laying on Epcot, the model with him and John Hedge. <laughs> but I found, I forgot That's I even funny. had that. And We had the chance cool. to have dinner with Bob Gurr one day. And I said to him, when did you realize that this was as big as it was? When did you realize that this was, you know, that you were creating these super fans? He said, that was never even in our we never even understood that. We were just working, and we worked for Walt, and Walt wanted us to work. We never thought about, other than the end product being good, we never thought how it was going to affect people. He said, I still don't think of it that mm-hmm. way. I see it, but that's not how I look at it. Wow. So. Oh, and speaking of Bob Gurr, I just shout out to Craig, Michael Bowling, and Will Perry, because if you watched a recent uh, Adam the Woo video 
uh, Bob Gurr is wearing a connecting with Walt. He shirt. wears that connecting with Walt he does, shirt yeah, everywhere. He loves it. He's, a He's huge... mentioned that he loved that design. He actually loves yeah. that design. He said Walt would have loved that design. And the smiley face, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So that's that's cool. I know that makes Will happy. Will designed mm-hmm. that shirt. Yeah. So. Somebody actually tweeted out to the Diz Unplugged. It said they took a screen capture of the video. So it's out there if you want to find yeah. it. So, all right. Well, thank you for your rapid fire, Craig. That is going to do it for our show for this week. We hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back with you again next Tuesday with another edition of the Diz Unplugged. Thanks for being with us, everyone. And remember, Air Canada sucks. Bye. Oh, that's good.